Nice crowd. Thank you. What brings you to Detroit? The small business, the entrepreneurs. Um, I think the, um, I've been expecting this day for a long, long time. When I started my business, I tried to um, sell my products, ideas, and uh, to the outside the world, especially I have a lot of friends who do import-export. They're all small business. Ten years ago, they could not go because they don't have visa, they don't have money, they don't have this and don't have that. And I said, someday I hope Alibaba can build up a platform that all the small business can sell across board easily, efficiently, and cheaply. So after 10 years, things like that, we just started. So you hope that they take away from this meeting mm -hmm. an idea uh, that there's this huge market in China. Yeah. And people who want to buy what they sell. Yep. I hope that, uh, as I say, in the past 30 years, USA domestic consumption was the engine of global economy. And I told the people at that time, I say, if you miss the opportunity of selling your products to the world, to the USA, to the Europe, you may miss the chance. And today I want to tell the people that uh, if you miss the opportunity of selling your products to China, you will miss the opportunity, you will miss the future. Next year, China will be a larger market than all other markets combined, the single biggest market in the world. But you said an interesting thing to me as we talked. You said, I want everybody in this room to know that if I can do it, yep. they can do it. Yeah, when I started my business in 1995, it was very difficult. I had an idea. I invited 24 of my friends in my apartment because that year I went to Seattle, first time, my first trip to the USA. In Seattle, I discovered internet. And I think this thing in the future may change the world. So Tell I me can, about the encounter with the internet when you first saw it. Yeah, I went to the uh, Seattle and a friend of mine, he had a small office with like a four or five computers. I never touched computer in my life before because computer was so expensive to me and so complicated. But my friend said, this is internet. Just to type in whatever word he wanted to type. I said, no, 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 too expensive. I don't know which one to do. Even now, I don't know how a computer works. <laughs> but he said, Jack, it's not a bomb. Just a type of whatever. So the first word I typed in was beer. B-E-R, beer. I don't drink. I don't know why I type a beer. I found American beer, German beer, Japanese beer, no China. So I typed the word China. There's no information about China. So I say, hmm. What if we can make some China information on the internet, let people know about China? So that was the idea. So I came back to China and say, I want to resign from my school. You were a teacher. I was a teacher. I've been teaching in the university for six years. So I said, uh, I want to do it. I invite 24 of my friends to my apartment. After two hours of explaining what I'm going to do, internet. And 23 of them say, forget it. <laughs> he said, this thing never worked because there's no such thing called internet in the world. You know nothing about a computer. So why you want to do this? And um, only one people, he said, Jack, if you want to try it, just to try it. But if there's something wrong, just come back. And uh, after a whole night thinking, I say, I still want to do it. Because most of the people, they have a fancy ideas in the evening, but in the day, when they wake up in the evening or in the morning, they go back to do the same job. We have to do something different. So from there, I start my business borrowing 2,000 US dollars from my relatives and friends. So that was the, my trip. I call myself like a blind man riding on the back of blind tigers. And those people who are expert of riding horses, they all fall down, and I'm still surviving. Hmm. Was that the beginning of Alibaba? 
that's the beginning of China pages. Alibaba was 1999. So, Since 1995, so. I started a business. I, I almost failed every project, never survived. So 1995, I got idea say, if I, China is going to join WTO, a lot of Chinese products is going to sell across the board. So if I can make a site that can help Chinese products selling outside and helping the small business in the other country sell to the other part of the world, that was the concept. So 1999, I studied Alibaba in my apartment. Uh, you have said to me before also that in your mind, one, two, three is customer, yep. employee, and shareholder. shareholder. Yeah. So when you tried to borrow that $2,000, you didn't tell that person that he was number three. Well, the $2,000 was from my, uh, my relatives, fa par my parents, and all the, the all of friends I got, I got $2,000. But when I raised my money for IPO, even for the, uh, when Alibaba IPO in, in the New York Stock Exchange, we raised $20 billion, I told the investors, we've been believing customer number one, employee number two, shareholder number three. And people say, this is against our American investor philosophy. I remember one of the investors said, hey, Jack, you know, if, if I know you are shareholder number three, I would not buy, I would not have bought your stocks. I say, sir, please sell it. Because <laughs> I believe there is so much money in the world. There are too much money in the world. But I on, we only need the money who believe in our vision and mission. Because I believe if the customer is happy, in price are happy, the shareholders will be happy. But if, you, if the shareholders are happy, may not necessarily customer happy, and may not necessarily your employee will be happy. When you look, <laughs> how important has two things, trust and culture been? Well, trust is the uh, most important thing. As we discussed this a uh, few minutes ago, if people give me, when I had no money, because when Alibaba started 18 founders in my apartment, I told everybody, say, put your, all your money savings on the table. Leaving the money for, for 10 months food and uh, room, you know, rent, you're set. The money you have put on the table, I want to gather the money, and nobody should borrow the money from parents Nobody should borrow money from friends because I don't want to make your parents and friends bankrupt because doing Alibaba. So 18 people, we gathered 50,000 US dollars. We started Alibaba in my apartment. And those people actually, none of us have money. But if, if somebody say, I give you 1 million US dollars and I give you trust, which one I would choose? I choose those people who give me the trust because it's the trust that make, make us be united. It's the trust, I think 18 founders, they trust me. Because they trust me, I have to be very loyal to, mm -hmm. to them and loyal to the mission that, uh, that we have. I think a lot of entrepreneurs have know that I hate people work for me I want people to work for the mission that we agreed together. Because you don't want people to work for me, because people like me, when I, look, when I look further, this guy's a handsome, when I get closer, he's so ugly. Everybody in the world is the same. You should not get closer. Further is good. So you think a oh, jack is great, but you know, if you get closer, not necessarily. I will be angry, I will be happy, I'm happy, I got, but when people trusting in you, that's the most valuable things. I think later when we got a lot of venture capitalists invested in us, the thing they noticed is that because my team trusts me and I trust my teams. So this is the, uh, the trust. The other is about a culture. I think at the knowledge-based period, if you want to have a smart people work for you, the smart people need to be managed by culture, not by rules and laws. 
So in our company, we spend most of the time about the culture, and the base of the culture is the trust. So this is this is what we believe. China has changed. Think back in 1995 when you were in Seattle, 1999. How has it changed uh, between 1999 when you started Alibaba and today in 2017? Well, when I went back to China in 1995 with an idea of the internet was very strange. China was not connected to the internet. So I tried to talk to a lot of my friends that what is internet? Nobody said, ah, this thing never work. This thing never exist. Um, cause it's true, because nobody, but people even say Jack is a liar because he's trying to steal money from people telling us there is an internet. So when I go to, when I go to the China red company registration office, I said, I want to register a company called Hanzo Hope Internet Company. <laughs> the guy looked at me and said, this is the English dictionary, tell me there's no, there's no word called the internet. Why you want to register a company called the internet? So I cannot register name, a company name. But it, I, in 1995, in later sub, uh, August, China was connected to the internet. I was number seven person connected to the in China internet. In order to prove I was not lying, I invited my friend who is a TV man. Take the TV camera, they all stay in my home, and we, they just uh, try to take the picture. I, I, I die from Hangzhou to Shanghai, Shanghai to America to connect the internet. It took us three hours and a half to download the first front of the page. Yeah. At that time, there is no Netscape called the Mosaic. Oh, so every, I have to make like a hundred stars to keep my journalist friends to stay and wait because to prove that I'm not telling a lie. So how big is Alibaba today? Today, from 1999, we have 18 founders to now we have a close to 60,000 people. Our sales uh, called GMV last year is over 550 billion US dollars. And uh, it's just the beginning. We will probably go across uh, one trillion U.S. dollars in three years. In three years, so in that's three years. 2020. That's the, uh, <clears throat> no, I would say in three years is, yeah, 2020, that's the 20 year anniversary of Alibaba. Um, this, is thing, this thing does not happen in 18 days or 20 days. When we started, Year 2003, when I launched the Taobao and Tmall, it was funny. We got a seven founders for Tmall or, Tmall or Taobao. I said, everybody go home, pick up a fourth, looking for four things that list on the website. So we, we see who will come to buy, how much things we can sell. So we, came, we went home, we cannot find, everybody cannot find four things that in the home we can sell because we're too poor. So we gathered 21 products, we listed on the website, we waited for three days, nobody come to, to spy, and then the next week we got, we start to spy and sell ourselves. <laughs> for the first week, all the, all the sales was among ourselves, and then the, another week later, somebody start to test and sell. For almost uh, 30 days, Everything people sell, we all buy them. Mm -hmm. So we have a whole house of rubbish we bought on online. <laughs> Try to making sure that so those guys who sold who are able to sell say, oh wow, this thing really can sell things. <laughs> then more people start to come to sell and then we serve better and that comes. So How from there to now, $550 billion. Uh, market cap is what? Market cap. Joe, like 30, 350 billion something, 360, yeah, billion something, yeah. Um, some people, when they think about getting on the internet and trying to reach foreign markets, whether it's China or India or somewhere else, worry about counterfeiting. They worry about fake products uh, underselling them when they're not the real thing. How do you deal with that? How do you reassure them? Like any entrepreneur, 
when you start a business, you start to worry, and people around you worry much more than you do. When I start Alibaba, my parents worry, my wife worry, my friends worry, my teachers worry, my students worry, everybody worry. And they worry about a lot of things. The only thing that I worry is that I should not disappoint the people who believe in me. And when we started the Alibaba, we have a lot of things people worry. Well, you know, when we start Alibaba, say, hey, you don't have a payment. You don't have a trust. People do not believe in online. They believe in face-to-face -face meeting. And government does not support internet. Nobody supports e-commerce. How could you do it? I think as an entrepreneur, if everything is ready, that does not need you. Because nothing is ready, that needs entrepreneurship. For counterfeit things, of course, there are a lot at the beginning. But you have to fix it. So in the past 15 years, we spent a lot of time because you have to make sure the customer feels safe, happy. The brand feels happy. The reputation is the, the best. Reputation, the reputation is the best. Thing. Otherwise, the people say, I sell on the site and my things were copied and stolen. So we using a lot of ways to do that. Today, more than 100,000 brands partner with us. And I think we have today, I assure all the SMEs here, we are the company online today, the leader on anti-counterfeit and IP protection. Because we put, we know there are three, thing, three things that will make our site die. Three things that will be the cancer of our business. Counterfeit, IP, and cheating. So, a lot of things to worry about doing business. We also worry about people cannot receive money. If you sell things, nobody will, if you cannot receive the money, you'll be cheated. So we're using Alipay, we're using all the ways we do to try to make sure that SME can easily sell, easily receive the money, and custom service is good. When you created Alibaba, uh, there were three things you said about it. Uh, I want to talk about the comparison with Amazon. Uh, you said it'll be asset light. You said it'll be a platform, not a retailer, difference from uh, Amazon. And you said it would play on the world stage. Why did you decide to go that direction? a transactional company. Okay, um, I think the difference, Amazon is a great company. They, they did a fantastic job in, a, in America and the world, but they are e-commerce company. We are not an e-commerce company. We help others to become e-commerce. We believe every, com every company can be Amazon. We try to empower the small business, a marketplace they can reach their customers. We try to empower the companies with the logistics so they can deliver things quickly and if cost effective. We try to empower this every, every small business. When do, they do e-commerce, they can easily receive and the money. And <clears throat> this is all about, and we know that we, this company was, we made so much money in the past years. But we think, this is all because of small business. And the money we made, we want to ensure that we want to build up an infrastructure of commerce. So going global is so important. We should help, help not only Chinese company, yeah. we should help the global company. So today, Alibaba come to America. We go, we went, we go to, our CEO today is in Europe. We also have a lot of colleagues in Southeast Asia. We think we are not, we are not globalize Alibaba. We are globalized e-commerce. We try to making sure e-commerce infrastructure, the payment, the marketplaces, and the logistic can make sure everybody today can compete with Amazon, Microsoft, IBM. This is what we want. You've also been involved in, you made some really important acquisitions along the way. Uh, where, where do you see Alibaba going over the next 10 years? You're already in Hollywood. Yep. Uh, you're in the, in the cloud. I mean, you're doing things that are beyond the transactional basis of your business. 
We doing business, we go from marketplaces to payment to logistic and to cloud, not because we think there are money there. We believe if when we build the marketplaces, if we don't have the payment solutions, our customers cannot do transactions. When we have the payment, we know if we don't have logistic, they cannot, we cannot, they cannot finish the transactions. And when we have a lot of transactions, we say if we don't have a cloud computing, the cost of IT for our customers is too expensive. So we do all these things not because we think there's money there, because we know if we don't do that, our customer cannot finish their job, their, their work. Our mission is helping do, doing business easier. So our company must be a mission and vision driven. Why we are on the Hollywood, I mean the entertainment? Because we think 10, 20 years later, we have to know one thing. The world and everybody, no matter how rich you are, you want to be or how successful you are or unsuccessful you are. The most important thing is happy and healthy, which is called a double H strategy. Healthy and happy. Yeah. So now in this next 10 years, we are very confident about everything we are doing. Our marketplaces, e-commerce will keep on growing. Our, our financing will keep on growing, logistics will come, keep on growing, a cloud computer will come growing, and then when we have that much money, how can we help the small business when they do business? Their business are happier and healthier. So that's why, so we do not think we are a company. We think we are economy. Today, Alibaba is an economy. Alibaba is economy. The our, size of Argentina is an economy. Yeah, we're our GMV, Last year, $550 billion is, rank, is almost like Argentina. We are ranking number 21, 22 country, uh, GDP-wise. And uh, in next three years, we'll be go across $1 trillion. And we hope in 20 years, by year 2036, we will be the fifth largest economy of the world. That is America, China, Europe, Japan, and uh, there is an economy. We believe that economy, there will be a virtual economy that every small business of the world can leverage that economy. They can sell their products across the world. Every consumer of every country, they can buy things through their mobile phone or any advice through all, all of the world. Everything they place on the line, within 72 hours, they will receive it. So this is our vision. Of course, Alibaba does not own that economy. We want to join the force with all the partners to build that economy. So it's never crossed your mind that maybe we should own a lot of assets, that we should have an inventory, that we should engage somehow beyond what we do in terms of making things? No, I think whether we should have inventory or not inventory depends on whether our customer need it. If our customers say, Jack, you should build more warehouses, we build warehouses. If the customers, if our partner does not have the capability of doing things, the, 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 our business need it, we do it. We do it not because, as I said, we do it not because there's money. We do it because it is necessary. Do your competitors primarily come from China, Tencent, the others? No, I think... Who do you see as your competitor? Who do you see as your competitor? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, you know, we have competed with Tencent here, we competed with uh, Amazon there, we competed... But to me, I think it's too early, next to 30 years, Internet is going to, e-commerce is going to change the world. So it's like, uh, I've been saying this to my team since in, when we were in the apartment. When we're in the apartment, I say, guys, in the next 10 years, uh, in, in, in the future, Alibaba will be the top 10 websites of the world. And my founders look at me and say, what does 10, number 10 mean? Today we're ranking like a 500 million something at the back. But you have to believe it. And then I told the team that internet is like a 10,000 meters running racing. 
we just finished the first 100 meters yet. Do not think the people beside you is a competitor. Running for another 3,000 meters, then you know who is a competitor. We are good today. We may not be good if we lose our hope if we lose our vision, you lose your culture. If we lose our culture and team, we're nothing. Most of the company, they were so good. When Netscape was so good, we never thought it would disappear. Yahoo was good. We never thought like today. So don't believe you'll be good all the time. Be paranoid. Yeah. What was it Andy Grove said? You know, yeah. Only the paranoid survive. Yeah. So I think. I think it's all as the, as the uh, entrepreneurs, do not think your neighbor Tom is a competitor. I think, look at the, 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 the thing you do is do not focus your eyes on the competitor. As you, you are too small to focus yourself on the, your neighbor or the competitor. Focus your customers. Make your customer happy is important. Most of the big companies, when they talk, they talk about competitors. I think I, 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 my suggestion one day, giving you guys when you go become a bigger, when you come to China, most of the American companies, internet companies failed in China. One of the reasons is that they spend too much time on making their boss happy rather than their customer happy. They spend too much time on competing, not long-term strategy. So as the entrepreneur, the always number one, number one priority is customer and employee. What's your role at the company? You've given up the CEO position uh, to Michael Evans. Um, you are still the face of Alibaba. You're traveling the globe all the time preaching the Alibaba story. Uh, you are the visionary. You are the one who thinks about where Alibaba might be. Uh, how yeah. do you define your role today? I have uh, three things to do. When I retire from CEO position, I told my CEO and teams, I promise when I'm a chairman. I'm learning, I'm still learning to be a chairman. I thought it would become a chairman when a company is big, I should have more free time play golf on the beaches, but I find, oh my God, I fly 870 hours in the air last year, and this year 1,000 hours in the air. Three things. The first thing I would do is I would make sure our company is a mission-driven company. Mission. Mission and a vision-driven company. We have to making sure the whole company believing we are building an economy that can empower every small business, young people, women. They can easily do business through internet. This is number one. So I'm talking to everybody, everybody in the company I meet. I remember there is a guy called Davey Wong. That was early days when I came to America. I talk about internet, about a value mission of. Yeah value mission of the company. This guy sitting there, he was working for a Fortune 500. He said, Jack is a crazy guy. How could you, you know, a company has no business model, no money, and talk about the mission, vision, and value. I say, David, come to my company. So I came to China, spent three days in my company. When they he leave, he said, Jack, I found you are crazy. Now I found 100 crazy guys in your company. They all talk and seem like you. <laughs> a company, if you have 100 crazy guys, we do not think we are crazy. We think the outside world are crazy. Yeah. So this is, this is very, very important. And also, I, 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 I think the first, for the first three years of Alibaba, we had a no revenue, no business model. And I told the team, forget about the money revenue today. If you want to be a long-term company, the only thing to think about is customers. The best revenue for our first three, one or two years, the best revenue is what? It's the email of thanks. That's the best revenue. If the customer sends you an email saying, you are great. I was so happy early days when I went to a small restaurant, people would pay my bill with a small note to say, 
Jack, thank you very much. I know you don't know, do not make money, but we made a lot of money through your website. Yeah. <laughs> I like that. Even now today, I had a lot of uh, customers, they, uh, they pay me uh, something, you know. It's not a briber, but they just, uh, there's a boy, he's uh, in the hotel, he opened the door for me, he said, Jack, thank you so much. My wife makes more money than me on your, in, in, on your site. <laughs> so this is the best, yeah. and I want to keep this culture in the company, keep on going. So, the second thing is culture, the people, and the third, is build up a healthy environment for Alibaba. So Jack Ma doesn't worry about a damn thing. Oh, I have a lot of things to worry about. So what do you worry about? I worry about the company. We have a big vision, but we may disappear in three, four years. If because we... you're disrupted by something you can't imagine today. We do, because the world is changing so fast. I worry a lot. You know, the, the artificial intelligence may take a lot of jobs away. And I worry about if we do not move fast enough, a lot of, if we do not innovate enough, if we do not spend enough time and uh, giving simple, easy products, application, technology for small business. Most of small business cannot survive in the next 10 years. If the small business cannot survive, we cannot survive. And so what does small business need to survive? Today, I would say next 10, 20 years, the small business, no matter where you are, if you do not try to globalize your business through internet, you may not have a business opportunity. It's not like, a, oh, you know, uh, I, I, can, I do local. Local business in the future is gonna be more and more competitive. Think about how can you sell products across the board. Your products, your chocolate, People in your village already know about the tongue in your village. But the people in China, they never know. They love these things. So think about how can you sell your products across the board. This is, I think, can face. Yeah. I mean, you, have, you gave a speech in which you talked about uh, the warning and warning for decades of pain unless yeah. you recognized uh, the coming advent of artificial intelligence, robots, yeah. and a whole range of things that could challenge yeah. how you had been doing business in the past. Yeah. You also have mentioned retirement. Yep. Jack Ma at what? At 50 something. Yep. Thinking about retirement? Yeah, I'm, I'm preparing because I tell you. You said you've been preparing since you were 40. Yeah. To think about retirement. When I leave university, I was 30 years old. Yeah. And my president of my university said, Jack, one day you want to come back? Anytime, you're welcome. I said, President, I would not come back in 10 years. So I thought when I'm 40, I can go back to teach. But when I'm 40, oh my God, life was so tough, so tough. My company almost in big trouble. So I said, I should not leave. And then I say, when I'm 45, I should retire. When I'm 45, I cannot stop it. And then I start to prepare, say, People say, Jack, you are the next Bill Gates. I say, I cannot compete with Bill Gates, but I can compete with Bill Gates who can retire earlier. <laughs> and I can compete with him who can empower the uh, more small business. So year 2012, I retired from the CEO. And I have my own goal that I will retire from chairman someday, and I'm gonna be preparing that since years 2012. Yeah, the thing is, I don't want to die in my office. I want to die on the beaches. <laughs> how, how, mu how much time do you sp Wait, no, wait. How much time do you spend on the beaches now? I don't have time spent on the beach. beach. That's why I always dream one day <laughs> I want on the beaches. Because remember, when we were young, nobody gave us a chance. Now, we are big. We should give young people a chance. Young people do a much better job than we do. This is what I think. And I think the world can be great, can be pro prosperous without you. When you die, people cry for three days, or maybe less than three days, they forget you. <laughs> so build up a good system for your team. Yeah, it strikes me. Giving chance for them. It's, it strikes me in 
tonight and since I've known you, that part of you is always a teacher. I mean, you're teaching tonight. You're telling about my experiences and what you can learn from the journey I have taken. Yeah. The idea of sharing experiences is part of teaching for you. Yes, I am a, I was trained to be a teacher and I benefit because I don't know, know anything about technology, computing. I still puzzle about what is software, how software can work. And I, I do not know about con, con, you know, accounting, marketing. I know very little about that. But the thing I learned from being a teacher that you, a teacher always want his students to be more successful and better than you are. Mm -hmm. So this is, I learned to be a good CEO. When I hire people, I always want to hire those people who are smarter than I am. And I, today I give a lot of advice to my colleagues. When they hire people, there's one judge. Look at the young man. If you think he will be your boss, he will be my boss in five years, hire him. Do not think, do not find people who will follow you all the time. So, I you know, as a teacher, you want you know, this student become a banker, this is a scientist, this is a mayor. You don't want this, this student bankrupt that is in jail, and, you know. So, this is the way that I benefit. And then when I become a CEO, I call myself chief education officer. And uh, I love to talk, I love to share, because when I, uh, as a teacher, you may not know a lot of things. The only things you learn and you share. People may not like the way I talk. And I'm not, my job is not to make people happy. My job is to make people think. This is the way we did. If it is helpful for you, take it. If it's not helpful for you, just to forget it. So this is, I love to be with this, the, the, the entrepreneurs because you guys reminds me the 18, past 18 toughest years that we've got. Mm -hmm. And I believe one thing, I'd give my advice to all of you as an entrepreneur, today is very difficult and tomorrow is even more difficult. But the day of tomorrow is very beautiful. Most people die tomorrow evening. <laughs> you have to work hard. You have to learn. You have to rely on your team. And that's my business. I like to be a teacher. I was going to ask you about legacy, um, but I'm not going to ask you about legacy because I think you just summed it up yourself. Uh, it's a great pleasure to be here with you. Jack Ma, thank you. Thank you.